Many of the sites which we so often cover are not only attributed to what we believe is in reality a far more recent, well-studied, yet less controversial ancestor, one placed within permitted timelines. Indeed, many of these sites would have been incredible relics so far back within history, periods of development and difficulties, many ancient sites so well-built, thus resistant to weathering, that what we claim as merely re-inhabited locations often become the cradle of more recent academically permitted civilizational flourishment. It would also make sense on a strategic level to have claimed such miraculous technological advancements that these past constructions still displayed as their own handiwork, adopting, or rather hijacking said sites, making academia's job an easy one. For not only are these sites attributed to civilizations who would have been developing said technologies in their mere infancy, but these adopters of past high technology themselves claim to be the creators of said sites. This regardless of the incredible perfection present and the mastery of said sites on display, no matter how unlikely this level of efficient execution would have been, no matter how preposterous to assume they suddenly arose, alas, this is exactly what one is expected to believe. The Royal Mausoleum of Mauritania, for example, located on the road between Churchill and Algiers in Tempaza province, Algeria, is an impressive ancient structure, which we have discovered is actually hiding some telltale characteristics indicative of lost technology and thus lost civilization. Claimed as that of a funerary tomb, like so many other sites we cover, dismissed of its controversial features and academically concluded as the burial site of the Berber King Juba II and Queen Cleopatra Selene II, both past sovereigns of Numidia and Mauritania, allegedly buried at the site. However, predictably, no human remains have ever been found at the site, and this is claimed to be due to tomb raiding. As mentioned here, there are particular features of the site, not only hidden in plain sight, but we posit were probably noticed and deliberately ignored during mainstream explorations. False doors indicative of a lost civilization. Furthermore, note the size of the stones in which these and other frescoes have been carved into standing tens of feet high, several feet in length, and over a foot thick, these stones were far beyond the weight of what those who are academically claimed as the builders were capable of lifting. Clearly showing signs of an incredibly long life, with several of the build's old stone layers now all but eroded to dust, not only was the structure built to last, but we feel has in all possibility outlived a past now lost civilization. Who really built the Royal Mausoleum of Mauritania? How did they lift and place such gigantic stones? Why have these features seemingly been overlooked? Questions which desperately need answers. It is a sight which we find highly compelling.